So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my talk will be helperoni compounds are higher in grass-fed meat and milk. Um, as many uh, as us are might be confused about uh, red meat headlines in the news, or you're certainly not alone. Red meat is uh, consistently associated with uh, increased risk of, uh, of disease, metabolic disease risk, heart heart disease. Um, as a result, is it led to widespread public recommendations to limit our intake. Uh, these recommendations were recently challenged by the Annals of Internal Medicine, who found that the associations were perhaps not as strong as we once thought. Now, these findings were again uh, countered by another slew of publications in high profile journals saying that red meat is certainly not okay for health. Now, it is important to note that these data are associative data. It generally means that participants fill out a food frequency questionnaire of what people ate over the past several months, and their metabolic health is followed over many years, typically 10 to 20 years, and is linked back to the food frequency question. Now, one cannot help but wonder with all the public confusion when eating got so complicated, and if our ancestors spent hours by the fire, discussing whether they should roast tubers, meat, or perhaps both, the latter being what they, uh, what they probably did. Um, recently wrote a paper about this, and important to note is that the, the background diet does seem to be a very important modulating factor, but uh, and predominantly it's studied in the, in the standard Western diet, which is one of the most studied associations in the news. Uh, also environmental concerns of red meat production. How can we feed the future population, 10 billion with a, with a healthy diet uh, within planetary boundaries? Some reports suggest the abolishment of livestock production and red meat consumption. On the other hand, that reports of the IPCC uh, seeing a big role for integrated crop livestock farming systems. Now, while nutrition and climate scientists argue, uh, farmers have to balance these trade-offs and often think about how to figure out how to be living for their families. Unfortunately, the quality, animal welfare, and profitability is not always in uh, balance in modern farming systems. But fueled by environmental and health concerns, and increased consumer demand for grass-fed meat and milk, this has encouraged a number of farmers to implement farming practices that many ascribe as regenerative agriculture, which is uh, farming in harmony with nature, uh, that potentially improve soil health, plant diversity, and climate resilience. Uh, my particular interest is, and as a human nutrition scientist, how do these practices potentially impact human health? Uh, this is work I'll present from uh, from our paper that uh, got uh, published in the special ratio that was related to uh, to this work. Um, important that uh, in our work we tend to go beyond omega three fatty acids and CLA. Um, you think the database on for 150 components, but uh, food metabolomics database indicated over 70,000 unique metabolites may be found in food sources. Uh, arguably, only scratching the surface. Health effects, but often remain underappreciated. So we are connecting the presence of these compounds in foods and dietary patterns with the human metabolome and the nutrigenome, so disease-related expression, and see how the whole food matrix, which contains a variety of compounds such as polyphenols, terpenes, the cholesterols, and other phytonutrients, impact our metabolic health. For those of you who have never seen, uh, are less, less, less familiar with the technique that we use samples, plant samples, food samples, human samples. We process these, we run them through a mass spec, uh, and we identify various metabolites, do bioactivities and pathway analysis. So these metabolites, 500 through 1,000, are reduced into phenolic compounds, terpenes, amino acids, etc. We overlay these metabolomes and look at phytonutrient transfer. So what is the relationship between the phytochemical in forage versus the phytochemicals that appear in meat and milk? Now, without further ado, I'll, I'll uh, present the data and uh, pasture grazing results in higher uh, meat and milk phytonutrient contents. Uh, so this is work that was uh, previously done by, by a group uh, uh, that was around 30 years ago that showed that grazing a monoculture pasture, particularly uh, consisting of fescue, resulted in three-fold higher phytochemicals in the meat versus finishing on, uh, on, on uh, total mixed ration, uh, corn-based total mixed ration. Now, other work has shown that with increased, and this was studied in, in goat's cheese, that with increased species diversity, you gen tend to see a much higher amount of, of uh, polyphenolic compounds versus uh, uh, hay plus concentrate feeding about 10 to 15 fold higher. Now, several potential health promoting terpenes are also exclusively found or in higher concentration in grass fed meat. Uh, and I think that's also why they've particularly been underestimated or at least underappreciated in these discussions uh, of, of forage uh, phytonutrient transfer into meat. If you look at it here, alpha cubinine, uh, beta carophyllene, uh, transcandina uh, 
uh, terpenes that are potentially antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, often only detected in uh, meat from diversified pasture, in this case, uh, uh, perennial ryegrass and orchard grass, but remain absent in concentrate fat. Similar findings have been made in milk, particularly goat's milk, work was uh, 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 done two years ago in, uh, in, in grazing systems. Um, here again, diversified pasture, find fluorogenic acid, ferulic acid, catechin, which are antioxidants, most commonly studied in the context of, of green tea, but also in other fruits and vegetables, but they also appear in grass-fed meat and milk. Now, the phytochemical richness decreases during grain finishing period. You see a rapid decrease of about 60 days, uh, a twofold decrease in, uh, and that is maintained the same in, uh, 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 with, with other phytochemicals too. Now, important to know, there's a direct relationship between phytochemicals and forage and meat and milk. This study, grass and pasture here on the uh, x-axis forage for polyphenol content and milk polyphenol content. As you can see here, highest in grass and pasture, diverse by pasture, low Grass, and hay, lowest in corn TMR. Similar with carotenoids, higher daily carotenoid intake from alfalfa, higher lamb fat carotenoid content, direct relationship between phytochemicals and forage and meat and milk. Important to note that greater plant diversity results in a higher phytonutrient content. So the more biodiverse, the higher the phytonutrient content tends to be for the monoculture pasture or feedlot finished. So things that can be done to improve that are biodiverse pasture seeding as well as cover crop grazing, which is what we're currently investigating. So fruits contain thousands of biochemicals, 10,000 biochemicals, potentially impacting human health. Biodiversity is very important, and I cannot stress this enough. More biodiversity tends to increase the amount and variety of environments. They remain largely underappreciated, but they may have important anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and general health-promoting effects, which needs to be studied in the future. They do not negate the need to improve, uh, in consume phytochemicals from plants foods. Rather, they should be viewed as complementary, contribute to overall dietary intake, as well as provide some unique compounds because animals cannot consume. Finally, we will look uh, real quick at linking livestock production systems to human health. Systemic inflammation is thought to play a big role in, uh, in cardiomalabolic disease risks, such as heart attack, stroke, cancer, diabetes, and obesity. There's been some research on consuming grass-fed meat in regards to their ability to modulate inflammation. The first study that we looked at, and this is a kangaroo study that is often cited, is uh, or fast forwards, kangaroo, uh, or wild native species, based on PMR. Similar findings have been made uh, with um, grass-fed uh, dairy, in this case pecorino, 10 weeks, half a pound a week, also a decrease in interleukin-6, an inflammatory marker with grass-fed pecorino versus the placebo cheese, which was grain-finished. Uh, another study, five, four ounce beds for five weeks, did not show a difference in inflammation. Reason may be diversified pasture versus a monoculture Bermuda pasture. Another reason may be the time frame or the background diet. Ultimately, the background diet will have a huge impact on this. It is important, and the last eight seconds I'll tell you this, there needs to be more research done in this area because there's no direct link to pasture diversity in soil and human nutrition.